I'd wanted to hike across the Great Caucasus Mountains for ages, but I just never felt ready. The mountains run through some pretty unstable areas of the former Soviet Union. The UK Foreign Office said not to go to a lot of these places, but to me it just felt like this challenge to see if I could find a hiking route across this hidden mountain range. My plan, as much as I can plan this, I'm flying to Sochi in Russia in about three weeks now, so I'm getting quite scared now. It feels a bit mad. But then I'm going to try and walk east along the mountains on the northern side of the border, so all through Russia. I'm going to cross down into Georgia, I keep going east through Georgia along the southern side of the mountains, and then cross into Azerbaijan all the way to the Caspian Sea, so I'll have gone from the Black Sea to the Caspian Sea. But there were no established routes for me to follow. I spent months just looking at old Soviet maps and joining up as many paths as I could find into this route on my phone. But it was full of huge gaps where I just couldn't find any information or I couldn't get the permits that I needed to walk in those areas. So in the end, I just set off anyway, hoping I could figure out the rest as I went along. <laughs> what am I doing? How is this ever gonna turn out? Like. The North Caucasus region in Russia has seen a lot of conflicts, especially around territory and borders. So access to the mountains was tightly controlled by the authorities. Yes, you will need a permit when you go up to mountains. And, uh... But I'd met this local mountain guide on the internet and he'd sent me some of the permits that I needed to get access to the mountains near the border. I don't have any questions. Now I will just make applications. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Dimitri. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you helping me. So I actually felt pretty confident. I thought, like, you've, you've cracked this because you're going to follow the rules and they can't do anything to try and stop you. Yeah, loads of stuff's happened, but I've not filmed any of it because I've just been busy dealing with it. I was thrown out of the first region of mountains before I could walk anywhere because I apparently had the wrong permit. They just refused to let me in. They refused to let me pay to come into the park. I can't walk anywhere near this border zone or this reserve for some reason. Yeah, hopefully this just gets easier as I get past this most western region where I've got permits for the next two places, so... I thought I'd try moving slightly further inland, but Russia just felt more and more threatening. I lit a cigarette outside of a bus station and was basically like accosted by some police. They took me into a room, they took my passport. I had police trying to get money from me to get my passport back off them. And then a soldier noticed me on the street. He took me to buy a ticket to the airport and wouldn't leave me until I'd agreed to stay in contact with him. <laughs> His words were, you're a dead man if you travel in Russia alone. I don't think you understand what Russia is. And it really put a fear in me. <laughs> it's so intense. It's been a really intense week. And I just don't know if it's gonna get any easier. <laughs> I nearly just left Russia, but instead of taking the soldier's ticket to the airport, I decided to take a ticket into the next republic called Karachai Chakesia where I hoped that I could finally get access to my hiking route.
It felt like I was running away from the authorities into the mountains and I had no idea where it was really leading me. Decided that this trip is about confronting the difference between real and perceived fear. Whichever's which at the minute. I'm definitely scared. <laughs> This valley's amazing. Like, I'm gonna get down off this pass and there's gonna be a big river I need to cross. There's gonna be a military building. I don't know if they're gonna let me continue or what's gonna happen, but this is incredible. I was walking right beside the breakaway region of Abkhazia. So my route often went past military checkpoints. <laughs> I've just been with the border police for like over an hour while they try and use Google Translate to ask me 16 questions regarding my movements across into the next republic and through Russia. One of the questions was, do I like Vladimir Putin? <laughs> oh man, I was just like, I've not met him, I don't know. The soldiers who stopped me were actually pretty friendly but I was still so scared about my permits being rejected again that I dropped down into forested valleys where I had no idea where I was going. So yeah, I don't think anyone ever really comes down this way because <laughs> it's just a bushwhack. It was only a matter of time, I guess, but that's the first bear track. So this track that I assumed would lead down the river just has randomly started climbing up into the mountains. Um, so I can't follow it because I have nothing on my map. Nothing. It's a maze. This mountain range is an absolute maze. But it was when I got lost in the forest that I started to learn that I didn't need to be scared of the people in the North Caucasus. This river, the river I'm filming. Yes, you must follow this river and um, you arrived a big, um, a big road. Um. Yeah. I got to a road where someone offered me a lift back up the valley so that I could get back onto my hiking route in the high mountains. This place is incredible. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And along the way, I met a family who even gave me a gift that I could carry with me. It's like a Soviet era ice axe. What, what a lovely gesture. <laughs> Really curious to see how I'm going to get up this part behind me. I can't describe like what it feels like to be in a place like this. It's just such an atmosphere. just taking it as it comes. It's not about the walk. It's not about the mountains even. It's just about the experience of being here. This awesome family just welcomed me into their home last night. It's hard for me to compute like where I come from. People are nice, but people would not just welcome a stranger into their home like that. <laughs> to be out here on my own for all this time, seeing all these new places and people and cultures. That's what it's about to me, that feeling. Oh, it's storming. 
so I'm running down to Mala Pass. This is grim. So I couldn't understand a word that shepherd said. I think he was directing me to a little shelter that's not far. Maybe this is his house. This is sick. Ooh, he's got Mercedes Benz slippers. Radio. So I think Boris is herding his sheep into this pen, I guess, and it's starting to storm again. And he's not got his raincoat, so I can't imagine he's too happy. <laughs> The people I'd met in the North Caucasus had been so friendly and welcoming, and after four weeks, I'd covered so much of my route as well. But I was also starting to realise that I was being watched by the Russian FSB. Weird encounter with some police stroke army guys in Uchkulan who were taking photos of my passport or trying to until I stopped them and just acting really sketched out and suspicious about me being here. Like, why are you walking alone? I've been stopped by them before, and then when I came down into one village to buy some more food, they were basically waiting there for me. An Audi pulled up with a border police guy in uniform and another guy in plain clothes, and they wanted to see my documents and stuff. Obviously, I've got nothing to hide, so I quite happily showed them all that. Then they drove me to a house in the village where there was a lady who they knew spoke English and they used her as a translator to almost like interview me. And they were recording what we were saying on, on the guy's phones, asking me like, why are you here? I don't understand, why, why have you come here? Started looking through the photos on my phone, trying to get me to send them copies of the photos and videos on my phone, which I, so I wasn't prepared to do. I didn't see why that was appropriate and they already seemed to know some things about me without me telling them. One of the guys gave me his number and said I must call him as soon as I leave Cabardino Balcaria. After about half an hour, the men let me go. But then I found out that I was no longer allowed into the next republic in the North Caucasus, called North Ossetia. It meant that I had to abandon the rest of my route in Russia and just go straight into Georgia. After having to miss such a huge part of my route, I suddenly found myself in a completely different place. I'd fought so hard to try and follow a continuous route across the mountains, and having to let go of that dream made me feel like I'd failed. And not being like a, a fluid hike is just really difficult to deal with because it saps my motivation and it makes me feel like I'm failing, like I'm I'm wasting my time here by not walking the whole journey. Just makes me wonder if like I'm not tried hard enough or if it was if this is the right decision. Sometimes I just need to actually just remember that it doesn't matter what I do. It's about just enjoying what what is happening.
When I got to the eastern end of Georgia, I climbed up and could see down into Azerbaijan, and I knew that I had no hiking routes left mapped out. So that's Azerbaijan down there behind me. It's weird to think that I'm nearly there. I think it's probably going to be the hardest place to get across that I've ever I've been, just because there's no marked trails on any maps and lots of silly laws. Once I crossed the border, the only hope I had was a promise from a local Azerbaijani mountain guide who I'd contacted on the internet before I'd left home. He told me that if I made it as far as this country, then he'd try and send me some routes that I could follow. Richard, uh, after one hour hiking, you will see a mountain on the right side. You will turn to the left. There will be a shepherd camp probably at the bottom. When you... I've got to find my way up the other side along the banks to finally meet the little cluster of houses where my trail up through the forest is meant to start. And I can see the ridge line I need to climb up into now. <laughs> the forest just looks so dense. If this path doesn't exist, I'm screwed. Look at it. just feels amazing up here. You can see right off the edge onto the plains of Azerbaijan. It's unbelievable. Dagestan is just over that way. When I got above the tree line, I entered the world of shepherds and their barking dogs. <laughs> Wow, I'm not really sure where the last two and a half hours have gone, but I'm pretty drunk and I'm full of food. It was the shepherds who allowed me to continue because they'd invite me into their camps and give me food and then give me directions on where I could go to keep heading east. Thank you, guys. <laughs> glass, glass. <laughs> glass. As I neared the eastern end of the mountains, I was finally able to climb back up right onto the main range and cross it for one last time. Want to see something cool? <laughs> Look at this. Up there, it was just wide open space. What an incredible place. I feel like I'm walking on the edge of the world. This place is, it's a gem, a gem perched at the eastern edge of the Greater Caucasus. I reached the top of a 3,600 metre peak called Babadag. Whoa. And I knew that the Caspian Sea lay just beneath the cloud on the horizon. The Caspian Sea is over there somewhere. The end point of my journey. So I'm walking down some epic canyon towards Grizz and this guy is walking with me. Yes. <laughs> Come on, let's go. 
I feel like in a lot of ways today's kind of summed up what one of the best things about this trip has been and that's just the people I've met and the help they've given me. I owe so much to them. So I might not have been able to walk all across the entire Caucasus Mountains but considering I've not really been able to map much of it out and what I had mapped got ruined by the Russian police. <laughs> I guess I've not done that bad. <clears throat> I think I'm just going to go to the beach and call it a day. When I set off, I didn't really know anything about the Caucasus. It seemed like this mysterious, kind of dangerous place. But now, when I think of the Caucasus, I see friends and I see places that feel like home to me. Absolutely in awe of this place. It feels so wild here. It really does. The idea of this journey had always been about me, finding my way across the mountains and through fragmented regions. But what I didn't expect was the unifying kindness shown by so many of the different people I met to be what carried me to the other side. So I dedicate this film to them. Thank you, thank you very much. And to the incorruptible beauty and the wildness of the places that they led me to.